Hey, what's up, guys? It's time for another Days of Our Lives review. And I just had to pause and think, what soap was I about to talk about? <laughs> I'm just going over my notes for all three soaps that I talk about. And I was like, I will do Days first, like I normally do. Except for I didn't do that last week. <laughs> Anyways, I did pretty good this week. First of all, I took a lot of notes. Um, <laughs> Up until maybe late Thursday, and then Friday's episode, I, I just gave up. Not many details about them. I was tired from all the details from earlier in the week. But um, I watched it pretty regularly this week. Um, I watched Monday through Tuesdays, Tuesday, and I watched Wednesday, Thursday, and Fridays on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So I'm really proud of myself that, for that. <laughs> um, I think, it, yeah, it was, I watched days last night before midnight okay but that still counts as friday and um so let's get into the review um first of all, i just want to say i hate this damn show <laughs> yet i still watch it because you know there's still some stuff i want to see um what happens but before i get into talking about the big stories of the week i had to talk about jada and rafe they they got it on. I had a feeling after watching the promo with um, Jada's towel falling that something was going to go down. And sure enough, it did. <laughs> yeah, so Rafe told her that um, Talia wasn't going to get any jail time. So Jada thanked him with a kiss. And then next thing you know, they were in bed. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jada was talking about, you know, what Kate told her, you know, life's too short. And, you know, dad's frowned upon that they date and um, at work. But, you know, what happens behind closed doors? I ain't, I ain't nobody's business. I'm like, that's right, girl. Kate, no, I, I agree with Kate for <laughs> for once. And Ray did mention that he was talking with Eli, too. He, you know, Eli's seen them together for uh, the first time. I don't think he saw them back in December. I, I, don't, I don't think he saw, I don't think he met Jada back then. I don't know. But, you know, even in the short time Eli's seen them, he, he feels the chemistry. You know, they weren't, if he did see them, they weren't, you know, it wasn't until like New Year's is when they seem to have been, you know, starting to get that chemistry going. So, but that was cute. Um, <laughs> and, um, oh, I said, <laughs> Tal Jada's hair looked nice. Actress sex. That's what always drives me crazy about soap sex. It's like everybody's hair still looks perfectly fine afterwards. And I'm like, my hair is like all over my head and sorry i keep getting flies in my house it's really fucking annoying i don't know if it's from the we have stray cats in the neighborhood and one of our our neighbors we have we live in a townhouse and our neighbor we share a porch and she feeds the stray cats so i think between their food being out there and then whatever else is in the bush where all the flies just hang around they just come in my house. <laughs> Every time I open the door and I try to, you know, come in and out really fast. But, you know, sometimes it takes Rocky forever to get into the house because he wants to talk to the cats or try to eat their food. But anyways, I, sorry, I'm already off topic. Three minutes, four minutes in, I'm already off topic. But, um, yeah, that was just, you know, drives me crazy. You know, be, make it look more realistic. You know, have the hair all over the place, um, makeup, smearing. Well, I don't know. They have waterproof mascara and stuff now, so I guess it wouldn't look too bad afterwards. I don't know. I don't wear makeup. You know, and make them look a little sweaty, you know. It's like, <laughs> even in air condition, you're still working out. But anyways, afterwards, they left and go back to work with, um, on the apes case. Oh, my goodness. But, um, <laughs> that turned, this turned even crazier. Yeah, I forgot to mention at the end of Friday's episode that Whitley said that it was time for Abe to die. Um, because she felt that Eli was starting to get, you know, closer to her. I was like, oh, yeah, I forgot to mention that. I'm like, that's, you 
you know, a bit of strain for her to um, go down that road, but okay. But see, now it wasn't actually kill Abe. It was to make it seem like he's dead so then people will stop looking for him. Which so far seems like it's going in that direction for her, but that could turn because um, Abe is not really a good cap. Uh, um, what do we say? Not a good prisoner. Um, person that you kidnapped. There's another word I'm looking for. You know I can't think of words. <laughs> Yeah, if you watch my reviews enough, you know, I'm always trying to find the word, but I can't find the word, um, captive, captive work, right, Cap captive, and she's the captor, I don't know, I will Google, but that's too much work right now, anyway, <laughs> But, you know, Theola asked Eli, you know, why is he questioning the nurse? And Eli answered my question. I think he watched, <laughs> been watching my reviews. Because I always wonder, how do they not have cameras in the hospital? It's 2023. There should be cameras all over the place. There shouldn't be no question what's going on. But Eli said that, you know, Whitley, she's a nurse, so she could have... So she knows what camera angles to avoid and stuff. So I'm like thinking, but still I'm thinking, you know, a camera by an elevator, that should still be a thing. But I digress, you know, unless, you know, some security guard um got paid to, you know, knock it out. So some doctors or some nurses could, you know, have their little affairs in the elevator. But I don't know. That would be a more juicier story than some of these other stories I'm about to talk about. <laughs> but Whitley snuck out. Now that I think about it, I don't think um, Eli actually said that she can leave. I think she just snuck out. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, she went back. Um, Abe was having a memory of Theo at their wedding, um, him handing him a cane. And um, so he gets all loud with him and... Um, um, Whitley said that, you know, no, that's your son, Brandon, that you were thinking of. He was your best man. And I'm like, oh, she remembers Brandon. And now still, I'm like, well, I know he's the mayor, but now I'm like, how long has she had this thing for <laughs> And I could just, like, expect, like, if he ever saw, like, Paulina, Paulina, he should be like, oh, no, that's your ex-wife, Lexi. I could totally see that. <laughs> Ugh, like, how long has Whit Whitley been on him? <laughs> and I don't know if this is true, but I didn't really read the, um, I didn't watch the video, but on YouTube, there was a, um, what, what, what you're watching this on now. There was a video with, like, spoilers. I'm not sure how accurate they are, but they're saying that Whitley is Paulina's sister, twin sister. I don't know if that's true. I don't read spoilers. The only spoilers that I would look into would be the weekly promo. But, um, I don't know. But anyways, she tells him that she had to go to the hospital and they wanted to do a blood sample. But she didn't think it was really good for her to drag him to the hospital for the blood sample. Because, you know, that's so much work. And you've already been through so much. <laughs> but she was just telling him how, you know, much better he's been doing. Ugh. But then I was like, oh, no, she about to eject him with something to, like, knock him out. Or what? I was still thinking that she was actually going to kill him, kill him. But no, so she was just taking the blood sample so she could give it to Big Theo to plant at the docks. So he planted his blood at the docks and it made it look like he um he lied and told Eli and Rafe that he saw the dude go into the water and never came out. <laughs> so he had Abe's blood oh yeah and his um hospital bracelet up there too and Eli even jumped in the water to look for him and couldn't find him. So they just assumed that he's dead. And I'm like, you're just going off of the word of some dude <laughs> as just some random dude that you don't even know you don't even know if you can actually trust him 
And they went back to Whitley and it's like, um, yeah, more going on here than I signed up for, so I'm gonna need some more money. And Whitley's like, oh, I'm a nurse, so like, no. <laughs> and then she like minded them like, um, how's your grandma doing? I'm like, you evil. I'm like, boy, just go tell the truth. Oh, Lordy, just go tell the truth already, because this is not going to end well for you, little little Thea, little fake Thea. Well, he's still little Thea to me. <laughs> I don't know, now I want to go back and watch those old scenes of little Theo and Sierra. They were so cute, thought they would be together, and then, you know, grow up and Sierra fell for the necktie killer. <laughs> Oh, Lordy. But yeah, Rafe and Jada went to go tell Polly, and then she opened the door. She looked at them and was like, oh, no, you're not coming to tell me jack shit, basically. I was like, she just know. But I can't believe that they just automatically thinking that Abe. Abe is the one. Abe. Thinking that Abe was dead. Mm -hmm. But, um... I did watch the promo last night, and um, Abe is still watching that, um, it was a body and soul, um, that, um, that soap opera that Whitley has him watching, and sure enough, fake Theo is in it as a, <laughs> so that's where she got him from, that, that <laughs> Oh, yeah, and Kate's going to be in there, too. Um, but, you know, not as Kate, you know, kind of like what um, Kayla and Marlena were. And um, but fake Theo's in there as an actor, and he's going to see him. <laughs> I'm like, oh, Lordy. He's going to start asking questions again, you know. He just asks too many damn questions. <laughs> I don't know what Willie's going to do with that, but... <laughs> Oh, so that'd be interesting how um, Whitley and Fake Theo is going to explain that. But, um, anyways, oh, they're going to have a memorial for Abe because they're still assuming he's dead. Based on, you know, testing out the blood, the, the brace, seeing the bracelet, and the eyewitness who can't really trust not only that but you know they don't have cameras down there because it's not the same area that um clyde went to the night after he killed abby uh i don't know maybe maybe not but i digress but we do get Lonnie back last week i did talk about that last week i saw the she was going to be back but i didn't think she was She's out of prison, I assume. Well, she, she's going to be in the, um, at Salem PD and stuff. So I'm guessing she got early parole, maybe? Good behavior? I don't know, but she's going to be looking at the evidence. And I think she's going to figure out exactly what's going down. So. And she also calls Paulina mommy. Oh, oh, excuse me. Mama. <laughs> Mama, I'm home. <laughs> and she, her hair looks lighter. It, it looks it looks lighter in the promo. I don't know. It could be um, I don't know. Maybe I'm I haven't seen any uh Lonnie's. Well, she hasn't been on, and I haven't watched any older scenes in a while. So I don't know. It could be me, but it looks shorter and lighter. But we shall see next week when she comes. <laughs> so excited! Yay! Um. I didn't look and see if they, I don't think they said anything about, you know, how long they'll be there, but i uh, probably be gone once the storyline is over, but I don't care. I will take what I can take, what I, take what I can get. I, I, I have something there. Anyways, um, <laughs> at least I got some Johnny and Chanel scenes. Yeah, Johnny had, um, was in the square, um, talk was Wendy asking her out for a day, and, um, he was supposed to go pick her up, but then Chanel was walking in, um, the square crying, he was all concerned about her, I'm like, oh, my Chanel, so beautiful, yeah, um, 
she tells him about Abe and she he hugs her like don't think about it. He didn't really seem all that upset about Abe all that much. And Abe has always been like Abe was family. That was his um Aunt Lexi's husband. <coughs> and you know, he's always been close with um you know the Brady's and stuff, but he didn't look all that sad. He he more worried about um Chanel who's been her stepdaddy for two seconds, so I guess, but anyway, but you know, it's just hugging her on the bench and stuff. And he goes and takes her home, and um, he didn't want to leave her alone. Um, she wanted to be there for Paulina, but you know, Paulina had already left. She wanted to go down to the docks, um, where they found all the stuff for Abe. So he didn't want to leave her alone. So they called Wendy and told her that. Um, he was going to stay with Chanel until, um, Paulina came back. <laughs> yeah, because, uh, oh, that's why I was like, what he? he was, um, um, she was too upset to drive, so he drove her home. And I'm like, oh, so cute. They should have hugged and then kissed. Because, you know, when people are sad on TV, they, you know, kiss and bang strangers or exes. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. I'm okay with it, you know. I'll be patient. <laughs> but anyways, while they're having time together, Trip, who I swear he, I don't, he purposely does this shit just so he can try to get aroused out of Wendy, is walk around without his shirt on. <laughs> but Wendy, you know, she's not that thirsty. <laughs> I guess. But, you know, you know, she was telling him. But he overheard her making plans for Johnny. She's like, yeah, he's going to pick me up an hour. And he's like, you know, well, um, well, you can take 15 minutes to get dressed. And then we could have a 45-minute date. I'm like, oh, my God, are you serious? And sure enough, she gives in. Spend 15 minutes getting ready, and I have to say, I loved her dress, it was so cute. Wendy does this, she um, Wendy and Gabby, I think, are like the best dress, um, people not just um, women, but people in general on the show. They always have cute stuff, always wearing cute stuff. And I just realized my fan is not facing me at all. Okay, now it's facing me. I was like, I was getting kind of warm. I had the AC on, but this place is so old. It's a need, you know, need to fix the um, ventilation. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Not, you know, it's, they didn't really do a really good job with, you know, making it so that it, warms or cools off easily <sighs> maybe you understand I'll, I'll think of the words and say it next time but it's hella cold downstairs and it's kind of warm upstairs so I have my fan in my office to cool me down anyways so yeah they played Jenga and took shots and it looked pretty fun and he cooked her fish tacos which is you know, I don't think I've ever had fish taco, but I'm not a big fish fan. Um, I I stick with my beef tacos. <laughs> my beef tacos. Never had chicken tacos, I don't think. I like chicken, but chicken and a taco, that just don't seem right. But I digress. But, yeah, she got the call from Johnny. Um, and, you know, he said I'd be there later. And... And she's like, no, just stay there with Chanel. You know, she needs you. And, you know, she was very understanding about this. But So I was glad about that. Um, that she understood the situation. And she told Tripp and Tripp, you know, was talking with Steve when Johnny shows up to take Wendy out. <laughs> and um, 
She's like, oh, you didn't have to come, but, you know, I already had a date and road trip, and he made me dinner and stuff, and he's like, and John is like, well, you know, I'll take you for some dessert, and, of course, you know, me going straight to <laughs> um, Dumpsterville with my mind, Dirtyville, <laughs> I'm thinking of something completely different when he mentioned dessert, but, um. Yeah, they actually went out to get ice cream, but before they left, um, Wendy and Trip kissed, and Johnny's like, mm, I don't want to see that. <laughs> but I was like, hmm. but yeah, they went to go share some ice cream and got interrupted by, um, yeah, well, Trip ended up having to go, um, cover someone's shift. That's what it was. Well, she eventually gave in, but Dimitri walked up and invited them to Stefan and Gabby's engagement party. <laughs> I'm like, oh, Lordy. <laughs> so, that's that. And now that I think about this, this is kind of out of order. Um... Yeah, because now I'm talking about Dimitri and Gabby and Stefan and all that stuff. <laughs> yeah, and Zandy and stuff, that's out of order. But anyways, let's see if I remember. Well, yeah, I'm just going to keep going in order so I don't <laughs> forget something. But anyways, Nicole and Eric and stuff, I don't have to really talk about them for a long time, but... Nicole was, I guess she called EJ's assistant looking for him and still can't find him. So she's all mad, but then her Chloe came over and they were talking about um, seeing a specialist. Um, says that she can carry the baby to term. And she's just trying to figure out, you know, where's EJ? Why doesn't he care? And she would, she said she would want a better father for her baby. And I'm like, Mitch, shut the fuck up. Because I know what you're thinking. You're thinking that Eric should have been the daddy. Because, <laughs> because you wanted Eric to be the daddy and not EJ. Because you're so fucking pathetic that you want Eric, a man who doesn't understand you what the fuck it ever. Be your baby daddy and your husband, then EJ, a man who understands and loves all your flaws, your flaws and all. Um, <laughs> if you never heard that song by Beyonce, it's very beautiful. But anyways, I digress. I'm just a little winch. Um, <laughs> oh, well, they started talking about Chloe and Xander. Um, and um, Nicole still couldn't believe that Nicole, that Nicole still couldn't believe that Nicole. Nicole still couldn't believe that Chloe would want to hook up with Xander after everything he did. And she starts naming stuff that Xander did. And Chloe's like, um, <laughs> you remember EJ kidnapped Sydney? Because she meant, because uh, Nicole mentioned that he, um that Xander kidnapped Susan and Bonnie. <laughs> and then Chloe's like, well, you know, we can talk about what Eric did, what EJ has done too, but we shouldn't talk about um, comparing our men's digressions. That's not the word I'm looking for. Crimes. Let's just go with crime, because I don't think digressions is the word I'm looking for. But anyways, <laughs> um, Nicole asked if they were having sex, and Chloe's like, that's a big step. And Nicole's like, you sort of kind of living with him so the next step would be to share a bit basically and which they ended up doing um yeah that's like way down here <laughs> oh lordy uh that's yeah this is all out of order oh well it seemed like it was the correct order at the time but anyways i'll talk about that in a little while so i don't get mixed up but salone um goes to see eric shaved so he's fired um i like my man with beard so he's fired 
But anyways, we're talking about Salome. <laughs> that dress kind of looked like a robe. It didn't look like a dress dress. But anyways, they ended up having sex. And then Salome's like, oh, I wonder if we made a baby. <laughs> and then she suggests that, oh, they should have dinner with John and Marlena and tell them about the baby. And Eric's like, oh, we can have dinner. But yeah, let's leave the baby part out of it. So they're called, um... I forgot who we talked to, Marlena or John. I think she was, I think he was talking to Marlena, and they found out about Abe. So, and so I'm like, "Oh, this is good news for my brother." And then she's like, "Oh, my bad. I mean, this is really sad about your friend Abe." <laughs> yeah, but she ended up going to see Colin and telling him about it. It's like, "This is good news for you." And then she tells him about the baby and stuff, and I just Sloan's like, um, "Yeah," because Colin flat out asked her. It was like, you know do you want this baby? And all she could say is, you know, she just wants to give Eric a baby that he, you know, to make up for him possibly not being, not being Nicole's baby daddy. Which she does say, just like I say, you know, just doesn't mean that Eric is Nicole's baby daddy. He was never tested, so there's no way to know if he's definitely the father or not. And EJ was not tested, so still, we don't know exactly who the father is. And I am wondering why Nicole would totally trust um, Salone with um, the test, knowing that Salone don't like her. One, and two... You know, Eric knows that Salone is a liar, so why would she? Why would he trust her also? And EJ, does EJ know that Salone? I can't remember if EJ knows that Salone was the one that did the test on Eric, but I guess he doesn't really give a flying fuck because <laughs> he wouldn't want to do the test because then he definitely will lose Nicole if Eric is the baby daddy. But I could totally see down the line, um, Eric, um, EJ finding out that Sloan um, tested herself and not Eric. So, and will still keep it quiet so that he can keep Nicole. And either way, this sucks for me because, you know, I'm an EJ and Nicole fan. And, you know, if I like a couple, they're not going to stay together on the show. So... Should have put some wine in here, but I think I'm dehydrated. Too damn hot here. But anyways, AJ, um, AJ. Eric goes to check on Nicole, um, after finding out about Abe, because you know, Nicole always considered Abe sort of like a dad, you know, because you know, him and her mom, Faye, you know, used to be together and they made Brandon. Speaking of which, I can't remember, did Faye ever die or she just just never comes around. I forgot what happened with her storyline. They know it's like forever ago. But anyways, um, <clears throat> you know, she's trying to figure out what to send EJ and throws her phone and Eric comes in, he tells her about Abe and um Oh, before she, before she after she throws the phone, she says, If my baby's father doesn't walk through that door right now, I'm going to scream and it's Eric. And so I just wanted to Scream my damn self, Sam Show. But I thought it was really cute that Nicole did call Brandon. And I like, they've been mentioning Brandon a lot lately. Um, well, yeah, with everything with Abe, but you know, they never do bring Brandon back. I mean, the actor, um, Matt, um, he plays, he was playing on a show on BT. I forgot what it's called, but he has long hair and it just seems like he's playing a butthead. I don't remember what the show was called or what it was, but I just remembered he was very not Brandon like. <laughs> and I was like, that's good. It's always good to, you know, act completely opposite than past characters. Just show off your acting skills. I always thought he was a good actor and very good looking too. So, <laughs> so I don't know. If they were to bring Brandon back, I don't know if, if he would be the one to come back in the role. But anyways, it was good to see them have scenes. And she told um, um, 
Nicole told Eric about EJ disappearing or whatever. And then she starts having these pains. And she said it could be what she had for lunch, which was a peanut butter and onion sandwich with a caramel drizzle. What in the fuck is that shit? Seriously, are pregnancy cravings really that disgusting? <laughs> like, those things do not go anywhere close together. Maybe peanut butter and caramel, but onions in there? No. No. Either way, all of it disgusting. But he takes her to the hospital, and, um... Finds out she just has um, round ligament pain, which is nothing to worry about. So, baby will be fine. Whatever. But in the promo, her and Eric kiss. So, that's why I hate this damn show. I hate this damn show so damn much. But anyways... Lee met with Rolf. Rolf is back. You talk about Rolf's suit. <laughs> like, what the hell is this? But anyways, um, I just pictured a suit. Okay, back to the review. So, he comes up, so Lee gets him all the, um, all the supplies he needs to trap Harris, while Harris pulls out a gun, he just met with Kate about taking out Megan, and he goes to see Megan, and he pulls a gun on her, like, he's about to take her out, and, but, you know, instead of, um, taking her out, they have a conversation, and she goes, oh, Kate is the one that, um, wanted you to do this to me, am I right? Ugh, stupid. Meanwhile, Rolf, I guess, shoots a dart, and, um, Harris is neck, and he goes down, and then they tie him to a chair, and it's like, oh, well, we're going to mind control you again, and poor Steve Burton. <laughs> I've never seen him in anything where his mind, his character's mind isn't being fucked up. <laughs> Did you know when he played Jason on General Hospital, um, you know, I didn't start watching in two thousand until two thousand four, so that was after the accident and um he became a cold blooded killer. Hit uh hit man for the mob. <laughs> so, and now he's coming over to play a fallen soldier who's mind controlled to kill people. Anyways, another reason why I hate this damn show. <laughs> but I, I, I'll say it has um, my stabby involved, so I guess I'm sort of interested in the outcome. But anyways, he's screaming no as he gets zapped. And... <laughs> oh, lordy. But... More... See, yeah, that's another thing that's out of order. <laughs> Because, <laughs> the, the, anyways, but it's all set up for the um engagement party that didn't really even get started, but I'll talk about that more. But Leo, Leo's been getting me these last few weeks talking about Dimitri. I thought it's hilarious. Um, him bringing, he brought in some flowers. I thought it was for him, but it was for Gwen. <sighs> Lordy, <laughs> and he asked if she was going to accept the proposal. He asked, "Does he have a magic penis?" <laughs> well, he didn't pull a rabbit out of it. If he's not the David Car Car <laughs> Copperfield of the bedroom, then why marry him? <sighs> so. So Leo just keeps referring Dimitri <laughs> as, uh, as having a magic penis. So 
Yeah, so I was just <laughs> laughing all that time. And it's like, you know, he's like, she's trying to marry you for some reason. And Gwen is like, um, oh, she says, you, you really know how to, oh, she wants to, oh, what do you say? Oh, she prevents that Dimitri only wants to marry Gwen for something. And she said, you really know how to flatter a girl. And I'm just thinking, She's like, well, why don't you think that maybe he just loves me and wants to spend the rest of his life with me? And I'm thinking, girl, he's known me for two seconds. I mean, I I guess I could sort of believe in love at first sight, you know? I mean, I felt that way with french fries, but, I mean, I didn't marry them. <laughs> but I think Gwen is just one of those people that's just so desperate for somebody to love her that she... Whenever she gets the opportunity, she just falls hard for it. So, yeah. But yeah, I'm like, I put in parentheses. Y'all known each other for two seconds. But Zandy did overhear Dimitri calling Megan and telling her that he um, proposed to um, the rich tech woman. <laughs> she hasn't accepted his proposal and so Zandy got all upset and you know defending Gwen and stuff I'm like boy go somewhere <laughs> and Michi doesn't get why he cares about his affairs and Zandy's like he only cares about Gwen I'm like really two people fighting over Gwen I mean okay I could get Dimitri and Leo fighting over it because Leo is actually Gwen's friend but Sandy, you got Sarah, and right now you got Chloe, <laughs> and you have Sarah, who eventually is going to come back with your baby, so, <sighs> anyways, <laughs> yeah, but, um, Dimitri shows up to Gwen's, um, and officially proposes, <laughs> um, Leo asks where to ring, <laughs> First ring, and he's like, If a man's not willing to go down on bended knee, he's not worth marrying. <laughs> of course, straight to the gutter. <laughs> Dimitri actually pulls out a ring, <laughs> and Leo's impressed. And he eventually gives in and lets um, Dimitri propose to Gwen. And he also invites her to the um, Stefan and Gabby's engagement party. And she said yes to the party, but um, hold on the proposal. So, still see how that goes out. But Santa goes home with some food and him and Chloe eat. And um, they talk about Gwen and Dimitri and then Sarah. And Chloe just, you know, seems all upset. <laughs> and Xander's like, um, remember you were very open about, you know, how you feel about breaking stuff. So she had to go, touche. <laughs> and then next thing you know, they're kissing. <laughs> and he, like, takes off his shirt and she's like, oh, I had to write down the quote. What? Did you want to take, did you want to take off my shirt? <laughs> she's like, no, we don't want our first time to be on the couch. And I'm like, why not? It's her couch. And then again, it doesn't look all that, that comfortable. <laughs> and she's like, oh, let's go to the bedroom. He's like, well, I didn't make my bed and my room messed up. She's like, oh, it's mine. <laughs> so they go into hers and we got to see Chloe's booty. <laughs> Those are some cute undies too, Chloe. Looking cute. Yeah. And I was like, we never get to stop. I mean, it was hot, but you know, you know, I'm still mad that Stephanie and Gabby haven't had a scene like that yet. Boo. I don't know. The actors not want to do that? Or is that just a time thing? I don't know. Either way, I don't like it. You know, especially with um, Camilla leaving soon. I think we should get one good stabby thing in. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> Anyways, and then... That's all the deep um, <laughs> notes that I took. The rest of them um, are, you know, just little snippets of what happened on Friday's episode. Thursday, Friday's episodes that I didn't go in depth for. 
<laughs> but you know, I had to write down the quote. <laughs> Stefan and Gabby, well, first, uh, Gabby came home. She was a little late coming home, get ready for the party. And um, Stefan had told her about talking with um, Megan. I forgot which episode that was. Tuesday? I forgot, Monday or Tuesday. Wednesday, I don't know. Anyways, she told him that... Um, Kristen had left town to um, look for a good lawyer to help get um, Rachel back. She had a long list or whatever. But Stefan calls her phone and heard it ringing because Megan left the ringer on for some reason and left it for <laughs> Stefan to get it because he had it in his hand showing it to Gabby. So... And Megan hasn't realized that it's missing. So, yeah, only apparently only Rachel has been texting um, Kristen. So I guess that's why she doesn't really care. But anyways, and he thinks that there's something up with EJ still being gone, too. But, you know, they just let it go. <laughs> and went up and got ready for their party. They were talking about they didn't really want to go to their own party. <laughs> I was like, damn. Sounds like me not really. I was like, yeah. To go out, but that requires me to put clothes on, and I'm happy about PJ. <laughs> but I did write down a quote when um Stefan was trying to zip up Gabby's dress. It was in the promo for last week, but I couldn't remember the exact words. But I wrote it down last night. <laughs> Stefan, I can't get it up, Gabby. I beg to differ. <laughs> and I'm like, Gabby, you definitely see that Stefan has no problem <laughs> getting it up for you, definitely. He just has to look at that ass. <laughs> what a good time it is. It definitely... Okay, I'm gonna stop laughing. I'm gonna stop laughing. Okay, but it's funny. <laughs> He just, um, <laughs> he just ended up taking it off anyways, and they had sex, so then they had to get ready again. <laughs> they decided to go to the party. And then Jane, Kristen, we finally got to see them again. They're still in the wine cellar. And I was funny to Kristen. She's like, all these lushes in the house, ain't nobody come down here for wine. <laughs> And I'm still on this inappropriate chemistry going on between um, EJ and Kristen. It's not brotherly love. It's very sexual tension, to, at least to me anyways. I know some uh, some people, some other people that I talked to said that they had that too. <laughs> I don't know. It's something with Dan and Stacey, both of them, they both give off that with pretty much everybody they have seen. <laughs> it seems like to me. Anyway, well, you know, Dan and a certain other person. I don't see it. But anyways, she's not on the show. You probably know who I'm talking about. Anyway, but Ralph had um gave Megan the um forget me drug to give to um so that she can give it to EJ and Kristen while um he's setting Harris free to go off Stefan at his own party. <sighs> and sure enough, she goes down there to see them. And they're like, oh, we won't say nothing. She's like, I know y'all are going to say something. So I'm going to stick you with this. And Kristen's like, no. And EJ was, you know, trying to get out to help her. And like, oh, so cute. They fight with each other, but they're there for each other too. That's That's how siblings are. <laughs> it's like we can fight, but if somebody wants to fight us, we're gonna fight together against them. That's how that's how that's how simple times. <laughs> and oh my gosh, Leo. Leo sneaks into the house. They the, the back door is open. He has a recorder. He's talking about how shitty Demira's security is. And he's like, oh, well, I shouldn't put that out into the world. I'm like, we've 
been done seeing that. And I'm sure new sources have already leaned, you know, talked about that, seeing as, you know, Clyde was able to get in and kill Abby and Xander was able to get in to kidnap Susan. So I think it's pretty obvious that the mayor's security sucks. But anyways, we're talking about, you know, he thinks something is in a tunnel because, you know, Megan acted last week. So he goes down there and he finds EJ and Kristen still tied to the chairs. So I'm like, will he be able to get them out before? Well, Megan is at the party. So I guess he could probably get them out. So we'll see how that goes. But that would be funny. <laughs> Leo's the one that saves the day again. Go! Uh, anyways, but, um, Johnny and Wendy do decide to go to the party, and Lee sees Wendy, um, doesn't want her to go, because, um, Stefan cuckold him, and I'm like, I know that word, I look it up again. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, basically st still stealing his wife, but Gabby was Stefan's wife first, Lee. And they could have still been together if it wasn't for your funky ass. But anyways, but he warned Wendy that, um, you know, just be careful. Because, you know, a room for, full of demerits, you never know what's going to happen. And he looks at Johnny's like, no offense. Johnny's like, I, I know my family. No, not thank you. Yeah, and Stephan um, Stephanie and Chad were going to. Stephanie in that hella tight ass dress, girl. <laughs> you see, that shit was hella tight hugging every single inch of that girl Chad's like yeah she on my arm tonight <laughs> I swore I saw a nipple <laughs> a little chilly on set <laughs> anyways they go to check on Kate and you know she's still trying to text Harris Um, was it was it Megan? I think no Lee that texts um Kate from Harris's phone saying that, you know, the job is done and, you know, Harris never said anything else. So Kate, you know, keeps texting and Lee was texting her back. And, you know, Chad and Stephanie said that um Megan was pushing for them to come to the engagement party. And then she's like, uh, when did Megan say this? It's like not too long ago. <laughs> oh, really? And so she's like, no, I'm just trying to stay away from Megan. And sure enough, she's in the square and bumps into Megan. <laughs> and she's like, oh, mission complete my ass. <laughs> so she's going to go find Harris. And I was like, oh, shit. And, um, so I'm like, is she going to look for Harris or is she going to just go to the bistro <laughs> and find Megan and do the job her damn self? I don't know, but I have a feeling that she is going to show up there, so. Oh, but everybody shows up at the party, and sure enough, like, as soon as, like, everybody's there, in comes Harris with the gun. <laughs> Megan's like, oh, Harris Michaels! Like, her ass is surprised his ass is there, like, seriously. <laughs> but in the promo, it looks like um, Gabby jumps on him. And he shoots somebody. I hope it's... I, I I really don't think it's Stefan. I think it would be hella hilarious if it's Megan. But, you know, we can't always have nice things. So, <sighs> I wonder. I don't know. Maybe he misses, but ends up turning around and shooting somebody else. I don't know. But <laughs> just the way... Just watch the promo. I'll link it below. <laughs> Yeah, we just jump in on him. It's like, you not shoot my man. <laughs> I can just imagine what she's going to say. <laughs> so, at least my day will be fair. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, the problem may look like it was um, pretty good, except for the Nicole and Eric bullshit. But anyways, that's all I had to say about this week's episodes. Let me know in the comments below what did you enjoy and didn't enjoy this week. And if you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe, because why not? <laughs> and um, share this video, even if it's to make fun of the fact that I say I hate the show, but I still watch it. There's still some stuff that I like. Just... 
gotta give it time. Anyways, that's all. I'm done talking. <laughs> Thank you for watching so much. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. It is hot and sunshiny. And um, also, I'm not going to forget holidays. <laughs> First of all, happy Canada Day. If there's any Canadians out there watching, happy Canadian Day. And happy 4th of July to all my American viewers. That'll be on Tuesday. Anybody have the day off? Anybody doing cookouts? I have the day off. I wish they would have given us um, Monday off as well. Because going Monday, off Tuesday, back to work Wednesday. <sighs> Holidays in the middle of the week. Ugh. Anyways, I'll just be grateful to have a day off because nothing's better than getting paid to sit on your ass. <laughs> Do nothing. <laughs> Anyways, I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching.